I was extremely bored when we sold my business. I, I, you know, I'd run it for seven years. We had to be profitable. So we had a successful, profitable growing business. We were a couple million dollars in revenue. We weren't huge, but we were, you know, we, we were good size in 1993 for the type of business we were. I had a business partner. We were still extremely close friends uh, 30 some odd years later, but I was bored. Uh, I wasn't learning that much. And probably if we tried to, you know, grow the company to the next level, uh, yeah, sure, there's things to have learned. Um, but that was such a strong driver of my own personality and my own behavior. Uh, and the curve that I got on as I started to learn how to buy companies and started to learn how to invest in companies and then work as a board member investor versus as an operator was very stimulating to me for a number of years. And so I kind of come back to that. I think one of the things that's so awesome about investing uh, in 2020, I think the amount of innovation in front of us for the next 20 years is much, much greater than the last 20 years of innovation. And the, uh, the democratization of the whole process is extraordinary. So the ability for someone uh, who doesn't have experience, who comes from a different background, who's a first generation entrepreneur, first generation investor, someone who comes from a, a, an environment that doesn't have uh, you know, in the U.S., we're now talking not just about diversity and inclusion, but around equity. So gender yeah. equity and racial equity, you know, just just the ability for that, not just in certain places to be a powerful part of the learning curve, um, but also broadly across the globe, across the world, this democratization of entrepreneurship and the learning that comes from it. it's been very stimulating to me. Um, and I just tie it back to what was at the beginning for me, uh, what caused it to be so interesting. I've talked to economic system develop e economic development people around the world. Um, uh, every government has, I don't know how many are in the, in the Canadian government and how many of them are in the Toronto government. Um, and I think about, you know, Boulder, Colorado, U S like there's at least one person in the city of Boulder, whose job is, uh, economic development. There's like a whole department uh, in the state government, Office of Economic Development, and the federal government has like, you know, the Small Business Administration and all kinds of crazy shit. Um, when you talk to a person in economic development and you say, what are, your, what are you trying to do? They will always say, one of the things I do is help create jobs. If you go to an entrepreneur and say, hi, I'm here to help you create jobs. Right. The entrepreneur says, wait a second, that's what I do. If my company's successful, jobs get created. I don't need Miss, Mrs. Government or Mr. Government, your help creating jobs. I need your help with a lot of other things. I need to help attracting people. I need help with you know training, education, incentives around attracting people. Um, I need that kind of stuff. But I don't need your help creating jobs because that's if my business is successful, that's what we do. So that would be a good example where there's nothing wrong with that government role of creating more jobs. It just doesn't help the startup community. 